going on everybody We're moving on with lesson 9.4 today's lesson is angle relationships in circles okay so we're talking about a bunch of different angles and relationships to circles and how uh, all the different equations of how we can find them from there okay uh, we will be able to find the degrees of angles and arcs that are either on in or outside of the circle right so i need you to really ask yourself this question before you even begin right think is the question or is the angle on the circle is it inside the circle or is it outside the circle okay please just like always the notes and the powerpoint slides for this lesson are available in canvas make sure you go into canvas so you can get those right all right, so on, in, or outside, where does the vertex of the angle land with the circle? Remember, review, vertex means the point of an angle, right? So we can uh, just draw two, or sorry, the three quick examples, right? If it's on the circle, that means that the vertex or the point of the angle is going to be on the edge of the circle, right? So that would be an example of the point being, or the vertex on the circle, okay? If it's inside the circle right that means the vertex of the angle is going to be inside of the circle somewhere right usually these lines will crisscross because they're chords something like that right but the angle the vertex is inside of the circle right and then obviously outside if we use a different color again one more time right outside that means the vertex is going to be somewhere outside of the circle the point of the angle will be like this right so right this is outside this is inside this is on so before you ever start any question right ask yourself is it on the circle in the circle or outside the circle okay if we go on the circle first if the vertex is on the circle the equations are angle equals arc divided by two or arc equals angle times two okay so remember the two ways that you will ever see on the circle right is how we saw it, how i did it just before then right the vertex is on the circle. You can also see it being the vertex on the circle, but one of the lines is a tangent line, right? This is still the same exact thing, right? We have created an angle right in here, right? With this, um, uh, with a tangent line and a chord versus this one is two chords, right? Um, so the angle is either the arc divided by two. So that means if this arc is 20, that means that this angle is gonna be 10. Or if you're given the angle, the, the arc is going to be angle times two. So if this angle is 50, that means you know that this arc is going to be at 100. Obviously, there's just random examples that I just made these numbers up, but it's always to, uh, either times two or divided by two. All right. So if we go and do some examples, right, uh, if we're looking for the angle, or sorry, if we're looking for the arc, the angle is 38. So that means the arc is 38 times two, which comes out to what, 76? 76 degrees okay here the arc is 90 so that means the angle is the arc divided by two so 90 divided by two means that this angle is going to be 45 degrees right and same thing that means this is an angle is 80 degrees which means that this arc is going to be 160 degrees and also two ways we can think about this right another thing we know that this is a straight line yes right? Straight lines always measure 180 degrees. So if this angle is 80, that means we know that this angle has to be 100 degrees. 100 plus 80 gives you 180. And then if this arc, right, if this angle is 100, that means this arc is 100 times 2, which is 200, which we know now that if we add these two arcs together, 200 plus 160 would give you 360, which we know is the full value of an entire circle, right? So always things that we can think about uh, from there. Okay, if it's in the circle, if the vertex is in the circle, then the equation is going to be angle equals arc one plus arc two divided by two, right? So if we do a different color, right? If we have um, any type of angle here like this, right? The angle is going to equal, let's put arc one in uh, red, right? Arc one is in red, arc two is in blue, right? Technically, ladies and gentlemen, it does not matter which one is arc one and which one is arc two, right? Um, also, these two angles are also going to be equal to each other because they're vertical angles, right? It doesn't matter which one is arc one plus arc two. I just typically like to do arc one as the arc of where the angle is facing, okay? So if we do some examples there, right? Uh, if I use these colors, right, this is gonna be arc one blue is going to be arc two remember the equation if i write that up above right the angle 
equals arc one plus arc two divided by two, which means that this is going to come out to 156 plus 130 divided by two. If we combine those 156 plus 130, that gives us 286 divided by two, which gives us 143. So that the angle there is 143 degrees. Okay, over here, now we have to find the arc. We have angles given to us and now we have to find the arc, right? Notice that the angle given to us right here, let's just label everything first, right? The arc, this is arc one. I use red, that's arc two, which is what we're looking for. But remember the angle that we need to find has to be either this angle or this angle. Technically it doesn't matter because they're vertical angles. So we know uh, that they're congruent to each other, but this is the angle in which we need to, to use. We cannot use this 102 because it's not the uh, angles that match up with our arcs that we have. So that means we have to find this angle first. We know that this creates a straight line. Straight lines are always 180 degrees. So 180 minus 102 leaves us with 78 degrees, right? So that means this angle is 78 degrees. Um, notice, right, we have the same exact equation. We just have different variables. Here, we were looking for the angle, which was our x, right? The angle was x. Now our variable is an arc. So we still plug our numbers into the same equation. We just have a different variable. The angle is 78 degrees. And that is equal to arc one, which we said was 95, plus arc two, which we do not know, which is y divided by two. So this is our equation now, right? Now notice our y is in uh, the equation rather than on the outside, right? So we have to get rid of divided by two. The opposite of divided by two is two times two, right? Those cancel out. 78 times two becomes 156 equals 95 plus why? Now we just subtract 95 from both sides, subtract 95, and then 156 minus 95, plug that into the calculator, 156 minus 95, that gives us 61. So that means this arc is 61 degrees. Okay, now over here, right, this is the angle, this is what we're looking for, which means that's arc one, this is arc two. Now we're back to using, or well, we're still using the same exact equation, but now we're looking for the angle and that's our X. So now it's gonna be X is equal to 120 plus 98 divided by two, right? So 120 plus 98, that gives us 218. Yes, 218 divided by two and 218, that's an 18, that's about 18, but 218 divided by two gives you 109. So that means this angle here is 109 degrees. Both of these angles are 109 degrees. Okay, outside the circle, if the vertex is outside of the circle, then the uh, equation is angle equals big arc minus small arc divided by two. And so the three different ways that you can see this happen, right? The three different ways you can see uh, the outsides done is that you can see outside and both of the lines go through the circle. You can have it be outside where one of the lengths is tangent and one of the lengths goes through the circle. Or you can have it to where both of them are tangents, right? So we have outside the circle and they both are tangent, All right? And then if we go in, let's make our big arc is gonna be labeled in red. Uh, let's have our small arc be labeled in green, right? So that means the big arc should be pretty obvious, right? The big arc is obviously the bigger one, the one farthest away from our vertex. So that's our big arc there. This is our big arc here, right? And we see that this here is the big arc in this one, right? All the way across, right? That's big arc minus the small arc. This here is our small arc. This here is our small arc. And then here is our small arc in this one. Notice when both of the lines are tangent, our big arc and small arc have to or use up the entire circle, right? So that means both of these arcs have to add up to 360 degrees if the two lines are tangent, right? Obviously over here, it's, that's not the case. It depends on how it is, right? But it's the same equation for all three of these different types. All right, so some examples, right? We had, uh, uh, what did we use? Red as our big arc, green as our small arc, 
right? And remember, if I write the equation, I'll write that in yellow up here, right? It's angle equals big arc minus the small arc divided by two, right? So if we write that out here, that means that the angle X, uh, green is not great, or yellow is not great. X is equal to the big arc here is 178 minus the small arc, which is 76 divided by two. Uh, 178 minus 76, 178 minus 76 gives us 102 divided by two gives us 51. So that means X is equal to 51 degrees here, All right? If we keep going here, X is our angle, right? We see that the big arc, which is we've been doing in red, big arc is 247. Technically, we are not given the small arc, but we know that, right, it makes up the entire circle. So that means the small arc has to be 360 minus 247. So 360 minus 247 gives us 113. That means the small arc is 113, uh, which means that if we plug that into our equation, X is the angle, X is equal to the big arc, which is 247, minus the small arc, which is 113, divided by two, right? Type that into your calculator, 247 minus 113 gives us 134, divided by two, and 134 divided by two gives us 67. So that means this angle X is 67 degrees, right? And then if we could do this last one, once again, big arc minus the small arc, which is our X this time, right? Uh, and then our angle is 24. So we still have the same exact equation. It's just that our X is not gonna be on the outside. Our X is gonna be on the inside this time. So the angle, which is 24, equals big arc, which is 118, minus small arc, which this time is x, divided by 2, right? Since we're looking for x, we have to get rid of divide by 2, which is times 2, 24 divided by, or sorry, times 2, those cancel out. 24 times 2 gives you 48. So 48 equals 118 minus x, right? We have to get rid of 118, so we subtract it, right? Notice you're going to get a, a, a negative. That's okay, 48 minus 118 gives us negative 70. So we end up with negative 70 is equal to negative X, right? If you have negative X and negative number over here, right? So technically to get rid of this negative on the X side, you just divide by negative one, which just changes this to positive. So X is equal to positive 70, right? Which means that the small arc is going to be 70 degrees. Okay, um, whenever you have an inscribed angle, right, inscribed means it's inside of the circle. If two angles on the circle share the same arc, then the angles are congruent, right? And if you think about that, it kind of makes sense. If we think back to our rules of if it's on the circle, right, if we have an angle that is on the circle, and then we have another angle that's also on the circle, but it shares the same arc, so that means it goes to literally the same place. That means that these two angles have to be congruent to each other because whatever this arc is, it's the exact same arc and this, these angles are just in different places, right? So that means if this angle here is 72, that means angle X is also going to be 72 degrees there, all right? That's all that is, all right? Inscribed polygons, however, right? If a triangle inscribed in a circle and one side is the diameter, that means that triangle is automatically a right triangle, right? So that means, uh, we see that AC is the diameter, which means we automatically know that angle ABC has to be a right angle, which means that this is a right triangle and we can do things with right triangles such as trig ratios, <gasps> oh, excuse me, or Pythagorean theorem or things like that. If a quadrilateral is inscribed inside of a circle, then the opposite angles are supplementary. That means these two angles are supplementary. Remember, supplementary means that it's add to equal 180, right? Those two angles are supplementary. And then also these two angles are supplementary, which means that angle X, if I go back to green, X has to be 100 because 100 plus 80 gives you 180. And that means Y has to be 105, right? Because 105 plus 75 gives you 180, right? So that's how you do those there. All right, and again, some more examples, All right, If we go back, right, these angles have to be supplementary, which means that X has to equal 98. 98 plus 82 will give you 180, 
Um, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Look at me doing math. Shout out to math teachers. Um, which means that Y in 68 has to be supplementary. So that means 180 minus 68. That one I don't feel confident in myself. So I'm just going to put into a calculator Y equals 112. All right. Same thing. Um, opposite angles are supplementary. That means M has to equal 120. Right. And now if we go opposite that way, right now, 60 plus 2K has to equal 180. If we subtract 60, 2K equals 120, right? Um, and then divide by 2, 120 divided by 2K would equal uh, 60, right? So remember, K is 60, but the angle itself would also be 120 degrees, just like angle M was, right? And same thing, same thing, just obviously they're getting a little bit more challenging, right? These have to add, these have to be supplementary. They have to add together. So that would be 8X plus 10X equals 180, right? Combine like terms, 8x plus 10x gives you 18x equals 180. Divide by 18, x is equal to 10, right? And then if we do a different color, right, that means that these two have to be supplementary. So that means uh, I kind of don't have a ton of space down here. I'll write up here. That means c plus this angle, which is 2c minus 6, has to equal 180, right? Combine like terms, c plus 2c gives you 3c. Uh, I'm going to do multiple steps in one, right? We add six, that comes out to 186, right? Divide both sides by three, which we get C is equal to 186 divided by three. 186 divided by three comes out to 93. So that means C is 93 degrees there. Okay, that's all I have. Um, make sure you're writing your notes. Make sure you come to class with lots of questions. This is our last lesson before spring break. Make sure we finish strong before we have a nice week break. Uh, have a great day. Go Mustangs.